Organic chemists will apply classification systems to distinguish differences between specific atoms. None of these systems are difficult to understand, but each will become useful when understanding reactivity. When classifying sp3 carbon atoms, whether they be primary, secondary, tertiary, or quaternary, each will depend on the number of carbon atoms that specific carbon atom of interest is connected to. For instance, if each R group represents another carbon atom, when our carbon atom of interest is only connected to one other carbon atom, it will be considered to be primary. When it's connected to two other carbon atoms, it will be secondary. When it's connected to three other carbon atoms, it will be tertiary. And when it's connected to four other carbon atoms, it will be quaternary. We could also classify sp3 carbon atoms according to the number of hydrogen atoms that that carbon is connected to. Our groups will continue to represent a, a separate carbon chain, and X's will be a non-carbon atom. And what we can notice is that if a carbon atom is connected to four other hydrogen atoms, it will be known as a methane. And notice if a carbon atom is connected to three hydrogen atoms, it will be known as a methyl substituent. And it does not matter whether uh, the fourth atom is connected to is it another carbon atom or a non-carbon atom. A methylene involves a carbon atom that's connected to only two hydrogen atoms. And a methane involves a carbon atom that is only connected to one hydrogen atom. And remember, we are discussing specifically sp3 carbon atoms, so we know that it needs to have four single bonds. A very common and easy mistake to make is to assume that all primary carbons are methyl carbons, and all secondary carbons are methylene carbons, but this is not the case, as we can see here. The best way to approach these problems is to go one step at a time. If we look at the example on the left, this carbon atom is connected to two other carbon atoms, and it is a secondary carbon. But if we look at the number of hydrogen atoms that this carbon is connected to, we can see that's connected to two, so it's a methylene carbon. But now if we look at the compound on the right, we can see that this carbon atom is connected to only one other carbon atom, and is therefore a primary carbon. But this carbon atom is also connected to two hydrogen atoms, so this, just like the example on the left, is also a methylene carbon. Hydrogen atoms are easy to classify because their classification depends on how we categorize the carbon atom that they are connected to. Take for example a primary hydrogen. Primary hydrogen atoms are connected to primary carbon atoms. Secondary hydrogen atoms are connected to secondary carbon atoms. And tertiary hydrogen atoms are connected to tertiary carbon atoms. A halide involves a group 7 element, so fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine connected to a carbon atom, and an alcohol involves a hydroxyl group connected to a carbon. If that carbon atom is a primary carbon, uh, whether the X group is a group 7 element or a hydroxyl group will determine whether that is a primary halide or alcohol. If that carbon atom is a secondary carbon atom, uh, it will either be a secondary halide or alcohol, and if that carbon is a tertiary carbon atom, it'll be either a tertiary halide or a tertiary alcohol. When classifying amines and amides, we must look for the number of N to C bonds, not the number of carbon to carbon bonds. Before we look at any examples of this, let's first remind ourselves that amines involve uh, nitrogen atoms that are singly bound to a carbon atom, and amides involve uh, nitrogen atoms that are connected to a carbonyl carbon. If we look at any of the schemes provided here, we could uh, look for the number of N to C bonds. So in this first case, uh, for this amine, it only has one N to C bond and would be primary, as we can also see in this amide. And if we applied the same reasoning that we've learned so far, we could easily see how this classification system works by counting the number of N to C bonds for each of these compounds. One final note involves nitrogen being a group 5 element, whereas carbon was a group 4 element. If we surround this nitrogen atom with four nitrogen to carbon bonds, it will become positively charged and be a quaternary compound. But since it develops this positive charge, we use the suffix em to denote this positive charge. And the name for quaternary nitrogen compound is a quaternary ammonium ion. In the opposite case, when we begin to encounter compounds with a negative charge, we'll use the "-ide suffix to denote the negative charge present on that compound. Each of the classification schemes we learned about in this lesson are not difficult to understand, but what I will warn you about is that they are easy to confuse. In order to avoid confusion in the future, you should take time now and practice applying these classification schemes on your own to actual organic molecules.